So what I want to do is take a look at the data from 2017 to 2021 for the crypto and digital asset market and see which ones were left standing and which ones actually hit their all time high. And I got to tell you, when I went down this rabbit hole, it's really going to help you understand just how delicate and how difficult it actually is to hit those all time highs. However, we're going to show you just how hard it is to actually lose. So what I did was I took a look at coin market cap forward slash historical, and we took a look at from December 17th, 2017. And I laid this out. Uh, there's a link in the description, and this is uh, Google Sheets. And I took a look at the top 53 cryptos at that point to see what their all-time high was, because around that time is when uh, things hit, hit off, uh, as far as like Bitcoin and a lot of different other cryptos and digital assets, to the high as far as 2021. And you can just see here uh, just how we went through from 2017, or of course, some of these actually hit in uh, January of 2018. So that was their high. And I took that very high point and, and took a look at what happened in 2021. And we can see that as far as like, I mean, Bitcoin went from almost 20,000 to 67,000. So there's a big check mark here, or X, all time high last cycle. Yes, Ethereum went from 1365, 4627, 2021. All time high, yes. And then things get a little wonky. Bitcoin Cash didn't hit it. XRP didn't hit it. And it wasn't because of the problems with, with the company Ripple or XRP. It's because Gary Gensler and the SEC sued him. Let's just call a spade a spade. Litecoin did it. Cardano did it. And now we get into some other ones that you may have never have heard of. IOTA, Dash, NEM, Monero did, which is pretty good. Bitcoin Gold, no one remembers that. Stellar, I can't say it did because it actually was equal to the 2017 their 2021 high. EOS didn't hit it, NEO, Ethereum Classic did, this thing called BitConnect, I don't know if you remember that one, it was a big scam. Waves did, Dogecoin did, Binance Coin did, and went from $22 in 2017 to a high of 671, that would have been a great one. Dogecoin did great, went from a penny of the high in 2017 to 73 cents in 2021. And then Decred, which someone really remembers, but it's still out there, actually did it. And then the last one is Digibyte. It went from 11 cents to 15 cents. So when I talk about this as far as like the 80-20 rule, what I'm saying is that out of all these ones in the top 53, you only had 20% or 11 out of 53 that hit their all-time high again from 2017. What does that mean? That means 80% of these cryptos, 80% of these cryptos in the top 53 couldn't even hit their all-time high. So I came into the market in 2017, and I can tell you a lot of the narratives that you hear about right now were the same narratives you heard about back in 2017. The community is great. The technology is awesome. We've got a really big, huge backing, and we're going to be fantastic, and all you got to do is just hold on. And it was for everything you see right here, it was the same thing repeated in 2017, as we see in 2021. And we're going to see this moving into the next bull run cycle and whenever it is, 2024 or five or six. So that is the first part. And it was pretty eye opening because now I understand that, hey, you know what? All these things that people talk about, obviously, it's going to be very difficult for them to hit an all time high from 2021 moving into 2025. And we can see the data. It's only 20 percent. One out of five, just not going to make it. That's in the top 50. I've gone in the top 100. Nah, might be a little bit worse. So that was the first part of it. And the next part I want to take a look at was, well, even though this happened and it didn't actually hit it for all these ones, only, only 20%, what was the all-time lows? And, and we'll get into the, the, into the actual wins, but we can see that the all-time lows for Bitcoin, I mean, it went from 19000 to $3,200. Ethereum went from 1365 to 84. And all these things I'm gonna talk about, why am I talking about this? Why is this important? It's because even though like you take a look at it in the very first one, you're like, ah, Bitcoin only went from 19,000 of the high to 67,000. That's not, that's like what, three and a half X? That's not really, I mean, 3.4 X. It's not really that big of a deal. Ethereum 1365 to 4627. When you see these types of things, you know, you're like, well, who cares? Litecoin, 318 to 347. But we have to take a look at more of the data, which is there is a lot of points that was super low during this time frame. And I know we know that these things go down lower, 
but it's good to understand and why I'm always talking about dollar cost averaging, lump sum and dynamic dollar cost averaging. It's because when you hit these lows and these lows are around for quite some time and we're feeling those right now, we can see that from the low to the high, it's massive. Bitcoin, 3,000 to 67,000. Ethereum, 84 bucks. Yeah, it used to be $84 to 4,600. Dash, which one that didn't really come back a well. I mean, it hit $41 to $3,396. And even though it didn't hit its all-time high, you can see that in every single case, except for BitConnect, because that was a scam, the low to the 2021 high, you still did pretty good. So like when I talk about like it's, it's hard to actually lose, it's hard to actually lose if you actually do the right things and, and say, you know what, maybe I'll get it. Now, not to say that you should start investing in the Stratus, even though it, you know, the all time high in 2017 was $19, but look at the all time low, 19 cents to $3.14. Ardor, no one remembers this stuff. It went from two cents to 49 cents. Hypercash, again, it's like ranked the thousand. 62 cents at 270. So when I say it's kind of hard to lose, it's kind of hard to lose, especially if you're gobbling all these things up. So the next question would be, well, when were these dates actually hit? That's what we get here. So the dates for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and again, you can go through all this. I'll link this in the description. You'll see it's a lot. It's either 2018 or, 20, or 2020. And around March 18th, 2020 or March 12, 2020, what was the big thing right then? That was when we had the pandemic. So when I took a look at this data, the bottoms, the all-time low dates for these cycles usually happened one year after the all-time high, December 14, 2018. What was it a year before? 2017, 20, 2017, December 14th or December 17th. And in 2020, it was the pandemic. And most of the time, it wasn't that much of a difference between the 2020, the all-time low, and the 2018 all-time low. So you had a lot of time to use this as an opportunity to dollar cost average, get your cost basis a little bit lower, and then really crush it when the bull market came. But the big thing was, did you know when to sell? Also, the big thing I wanna take a look at was the all-time low. Was this actually before the halving? which we had a Bitcoin halving on May 11th, 2020. Was this all time low before the Bitcoin halving? Because right now we're in September going into October. And I know a lot of people are kind of concerned about some things. We're going to go over what's going to happen uh, potentially moving forward, especially when we talk about uh, money printing and recessions and just hard landing and soft landing. Don't worry, we're going with that stuff. But the question I had was the all time low would this be a good time to dollar cost average, to lump sum, to dynamic DCA as well? And the all-time low before the having the last one, the only two was Vertassium, which they went to court with the SEC for fraud in August of 2019. And even though they went to court, their low for, for Vertassium, it was $2.49 on September 22nd, 2020, a year after they got into their quarrel with the SEC. And the all-time high in 2021 was $181. So I don't know where it could have been without that, but it's just something to, to really consider. And then salt was the ones that I'm always talking about as far as like, are things gonna come back? I always say it's a dash of salt. Two out of 53. So the halving is coming up in 2024, roughly around April, I believe. And when that happens, we should, if we're taking a look at historically, should have seen all the all-time lows. So it's just something to consider about, like if you're thinking to yourself, should I stay on the sidelines? Should I lump sum? Should I DCA? Something for you to consider. I can't tell you what to do. I personally, right now, I'm dollar cost averaging every single day. But the next thing that I thought about was this. Well, even though we have all this stuff that's going on, how many of these different projects just came out of nowhere for the last cycle for 2017? and became the darlings and skyrocketed to the top. Well, guess what? For 2017, the ones that came out of nowhere, they started in 2017. And this is just the data that I pulled for, from CoinMarketCap. This is the first data points that I can find. For Bitcoin Cash was 2017. So that was one of them. Cardano, 
2017 was the first data point. That was created in 2017. IOTA, so on and so forth. So the question then is, well, how many of these came out of nowhere and became the darlings of the cycle? Guess how many? 20 out of 53. That's 40%. So even if you were beforehand and you were in you know, 2015, 2016, these projects, these crazy wacky ones, Electronium, <laughs> Obite, 10X, Komodo, Salt, they came out of nowhere in 2017 and were massively huge gains. Now, in 2021, you know how many, how many were actually uh, created in 2021? Out of the top 50, three, ICP, Internet Computer Protocol, and Flow. Near almost made it. It was created in December of 2020, not 2021, but it's a little bit different moving forward. So we can take a look at that and why, why is that important? And also it comes down to this. Out of all these new ones that were created, Bitcoin Cash, Cardano, IOTA, Bitcoin Gold, EOS, how many of these that came out in 2017 were actually ones that hit their all-time highs. You know, out of these 20, only two actually hit their all-time high. And those were Cardano, which you can see here, 2017 it came out and it hit it right here, and Binance Coin, 2017, and over here, all-time high. So don't be enchanted by the next shiny object that's coming out because as time has moved forward, it looks like a lot of these different projects that have been around for quite some time have done some of the best. And it's up to you to decide what that actually is. So the last thing I also took, took a look at was the top 50. So out of these, all these projects that were from 2017, how many of these are actually in the top 50? And it was pretty close to what we saw as far as the, uh, which ones hit 2017 to 2021 and um, were in their all-time highs. Out of a, that was 11, so roughly 20%. And the 2023, the top 50, you have 14 out of 53. So roughly the same things. There was a couple new ones like VeChain, a couple other ones, Binance, Doge, Waves, which was quite interesting. Uh, it was there. Uh, Tron didn't hit its all-time high, but it actually is in the top 50. I think it's doing really well because of their, their stable coins and things that they're doing. And um, Stellar. It's only top 50, even though what 66 cents, 21, and so on and so forth in 2017. So these are the things to think a look at. 80-20 rule is in effect. Just be careful out there. And then lastly, just to talk about it, 80-20 rule was actually something that we used in my exit strategy for the last cycle. And there's a link in the description. I've had these up for since 2021, as a matter. Actually, since 2020, I believe it was. I, I created this. And uh, it didn't do too bad. And what, I, what the 80-20 rule here was I was going to sell 80% of my crypto and 20% uh, I would just hold on to for, some, uh, for whatever happened. And uh, I had a price prediction. So I don't do this anymore because I'm kind of, they're kind of silly. I usually just look for indicators. And again, link in the description for when I'm going to sell 80% of my crypto for this next one. Mostly just indicators, MVRVZ score, um, bicycle top, NUPL, uh, time and risk bands, uh, two-year MA, pro multiple, and reserve risk. And of course, you can find this over at, uh, of course, the, the video itself, uh, there's a link in the description, but you can also find this on Dan Teaches Crypto, 100% free website. And um, now the, the, the thing with this is that A20 rule worked out pretty well. And these were my, my, my predictions. Some came to fruition and some didn't. It doesn't matter how much you get right it just gets something right. You don't have to be perfection. No one's going to be perfection in this game. That's for darn sure. Like, look at this one. Ethereum, I thought I went, would go to 10,000. Didn't even come close. So my price points were 2,000, 5,000, 7, 9, and 10. Thankfully, I was able to sell about 20%. Eh, that's pretty much about it. But on other ones, it did pretty good. Like Chainlink. Chainlink did quite well in the last cycle. And uh, it was one that I invested in 2017 as well. I thought it would go up to... Uh, the strategy was maybe $35. I actually hit $51 on May 9th, 2021. So sold 80%, kept 20. Bitcoin, again, another ones that didn't do so hot in my price predictions. I thought it would go to $250,000. did not even hit that. But it hit the first $60,000 and uh, sold and everything was okay for there. Next one's a little better. EOS, I thought it would go to uh, $30 potentially, but it actually went to $14,000. 
according to my two. And actually that was my one, two, three, my fourth highest point. And actually I sold at 1327. Cardano, I thought I nailed this one. Uh, I thought it would go to $3, went to 297. So not too bad. And at 289, as it was my selling point. And Theta, well, I'm actually still holding on uh, onto, of course I have 20% of all these things. Uh, I thought it would hit to uh, $10 and actually hit 14. So it worked out pretty well. So that was the another 80-20 rule that I used over here. And then the big thing that people are saying right now is because they're like, well, Rob, this one's different. It's different because, you know, the Fed is raising rates and we never went through that and it's going to go through a recession. Potentially that is coming out and we've never gone through that. So how's it going to work out? Because it's going to be awful. It's going to go to zero. Wait. So the first thing's first. Right now, we are only in, we're just coming into October of 2023. So next year will be the halving in April of 2024. And everybody's, the consensus is, is potentially we'll hit a recession where that's soft or hard at the end of this year or the first quarter of 2024. And you have to understand that with recessions, they average about 10 months. And this is from Statista. And we can see all the way going back from 2020, that was the shortest recession we ever had. That was only two months. And then in the 80s, uh, it was six, the 50s, 90s, 2001, com era, you had eight and then so on and so forth. The longest one we ever had was the Great Recession, which was 2007, 2009. But we averaged about 10 months. So let's just say that we hit it in the first quarter, which should be about March at the very end. So if we do this for 10 months, that'll take us to what? Roughly into 2025. What happens after that? Well, good stuff. Because also, remember, just because we have a recession, that's the economy. The economy is not the market. There are two different things. So we can see here that the recession recovery, this again from Statista, after 2009, and actually they, they took a look at 2000, the Great Recession, the 80s, and the 90s, and 2001. And we can see that a year from the trough or the low point for the market during a recession is when they made most of their games. In the, in the Great Recession, you were looking at uh, 65, almost 70%. Now you had to wait a, a second year to get to 84%, but I don't think anybody really cared about that. Actually, in the 80s, after one year from the very low point, you're looking at almost 60%, fell down to 48 and then the 48s, you came over here to around 36% in the 42, and so on and so forth. One year in, in uh, 2001, not too well, but 3% two years later. So moving forward, in all honesty, in the recession, the markets bounce back first in the recession, and then the economy recovers. And we can just see right here. Here's the M2 money supply, which everybody's worried about because of uh, liquidity. And I'll just answer that real quick. Did you know that we peaked out around July 2022, started coming down, and then, oh, look at this. In May of 23, June of 23, and July 23, we started to actually increase. Money printers went on a little bit. But if we can see, see here, going all the way back to the 1970s, we can see that in the very first one here, that the market, this is the S&P 500, bottoms out in the middle of the recession, which is this gray part right here. And then it rebounds and lets the actual economy recover as it starts to do its thing. So that was just the very first one. We can also see that the same thing here in 1980s when there was two, we had the same deal. Market bottoms out, recovers. Market bottoms out here, recovers. Recession is still going on. This was in 82. If we take a look here, uh, 1990, same thing, it bottoms out, market recovers. It didn't do that though here for the dot-com era. It actually bottomed out, came back up, and we had an issue with 2001 as things started to go down, but it did a little bit. And then moving into the Great Recession again, the market bottoms first, recovers, and then the economy recovers. So again, I know people are concerned about that, but remember, if it's all about timing, things are kind of going in the right direction. And that's it for today. So look, that was a lot of information to go over, uh, but again, you can find all the links in the description, especially the uh, spreadsheets, so take a look at that, but that's it for today. So if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. But that's it for today. Thanks so much for stopping by, I appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next one.